Hello and good morning or good afternoon wherever you are around the world and welcome to the final session of the UK Festival Week. Today's sponsors are the University of Wales Trinity St David and you won't be surprised to hear following on from yesterday's theme that it is going to be a study in Wales theme today. Now we do have a couple of representatives from the university who are going to just tell us a little bit more about the university, about what they can expect from studying in Wales, along with the various different opportunities such as scholarships um, and funding opportunities as well. We will of course have a Q&A at the end of the session. So those of you that are watching on Facebook Live and LinkedIn at the moment, please send through your questions via the messenger facility and we will do our best to get through to all your questions. And if we can't, we will pass them over to uh, both Gareth and Esther, who are today's representatives after the session. Just a reminder that it is a live session. So if you do have any questions and you are watching on the Zoom platform um, to use the Q&A session at the top. In terms of what you can expect today and what we're gonna go through. So we will go through top 10 reasons to study in Wales. I'll brush through this because I know that um, today's sponsors are gonna explain a little bit more about it. A bit about postgrad.com, a bit about the UK festival week so far and what we've gone through this week a chance to win a 500 pound bursary and what is coming up in 2022 in terms of festivals. Um, we have plenty planned and it's set to be a great year. So studying in Wales, why should you study there? Now I can say this firsthand, world-class universities and great research. The likes of Swansea University, Cardiff University, University of Wales, Trinity St. David, were three of many different higher institutions in the country. Um, great transport links, you know, we're only ever three hours away from London on a train, um, Bristol, which is just over the bridge, the Severn Bridge that takes you from Wales to England, um, is approximately half an hour's drive from Cardiff and around about an hour and a quarter from Swansea as well. Um, fantastic nightlife, so if you're a student and social, um, so, social importance is, is, is something that's uh, important to you. Um, then it's the place to go to. Cardiff, Swansea, Swansea, which is where the main campus for Wells Trinity is today, is a great place to go and study. Um, so great place to have nightlife, great place to meet new friends, great place to meet people from all over the globe as well. So, But look, I, I can go on about Wales all day. Um, I know very well, but today's sponsors, Wells Trinity St. David, they're here today. Gareth and Esther, if you'd like to join the call now, um, Gareth is um, a professor in business and uh, law as well, part of the management school. And Esther um, is a representative and ambassador for the Wells Trinity, uh, Wells, University of Wells Trinity St. David. Um, Esther, if you'd like to come on now, I believe that you're going to be sharing your screen. Um, Gareth is here going to be given some um, great knowledge and great insight. So over to you guys and we'll be back for the Q&A towards the end, okay? Hello everyone, thank you so much for this opportunity to meet you online. My name is Esther, the head of international at University of Wales Trinity St. Davis. This is your opportunity to asking us questions and to know, uh, to learn what the University of Wales Trinity St. Davis can offer to you when you study abroad. So I'm just sharing my screen. And also today uh, we invited uh, the academic director from uh, Swansea School of Business, uh, Gareth Hughes, uh, Dr. Gareth Hughes to join us. So he will join me to uh, give you the uh, comprehensive introduction of uh, what he's funding at the University of Wales, Trinity St. David's. Super. So I'll just do a very quick introduction myself, Esther, as well. Thank you very much for that to both Gareth and Esther. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity for us to present to you today as well. So as Esther mentioned, I'm uh, Dr. Gareth Hughes. I've been with the university now for around about six years. Genuinely a fantastic place to study. I'm a major advocate for the university for a wide variety of reasons, one of which being I'm an alumnus of the university myself and the experiences that the university gave me and the opportunities the university gave me completely transformed my life and provided open doors for me that I, I never would have had otherwise. So 
I'm absolutely incredibly passionate about the good work that we do for our students and how our strapline is transforming education and transforming lives. And I feel a recipient of that as well. So very keen to tell you a little bit about the university today. Also, as you can probably tell, one by my name and second by my dulcet tones and my accent that I'm a South Whalian myself. I'm from uh, the local area. I've grown up in Swansea my whole life. Uh, and again, another major advocate for such a, a fantastic part of the world where quite a hidden gem tucked away in the western part of the British Isles and uh, and Wales in particular is such a culturally rich and diverse and, uh, and, and exciting and forward-looking country as well. So I'm really hoping we get an opportunity to tell you a little bit about our, our corner of the world and uh, hopefully inspire you to come and study in this uh, exciting institution and fantastic location in the UK as well. Uh, so I'll hand back over to Esther to talk through the, the presentation in the first instance, but uh, just to say a warm welcome to everybody and uh, thank you very much for having us today. Thank you so much, Gareth. So I think I'm sure everybody can feel that kind of a warm uh, welcome from a Wales. Um, um, and uh, the university is going to 200 years anniversary next year. And this is our opportunity also to invite you to joining us on the campus to study with us and to witness the 200 years uh, history and sense of a purpose of the university next year. And we established in uh, 1822 and the original university called the Lampita University is the one of the oldest in the Wales and the third is the oldest in the whole of the UK. So hopefully this, we will provide you the sense of a history of the university when you arrived here next year. And the university also merged with uh, uh, the best art and design college in the South Wales area called Swansea College of Art and Design in 2013. So the university also merged one of the education uh, provide a biggest education training uh, provide the University of College of Carmarthen uh, uh, in the same time. So the university expanding as a quite a big uh, uh, university now nowadays. So the oldest education institution in Wales and the third oldest, the Royal Chartered University in England and Wales, which is after Oxford and Cambridge. Our university patron is uh, the highest, uh, his High Royal Highness, uh, the Prince of Wales. I think uh, most of the overseas students are really um, focused on the rankings of the university, how good the university and in every single aspect of the university is matter to your study period, study journey. And here we are proud of uh, the recent um, ratings and, uh, uh, you know, in a good university guide across the most major uh, university guide in UK and the world. And most uh, successful area is the student satisfaction around the teaching and teaching quality and the personal, uh, uh, giving personal uh, uh, kind of tuition uh, at University of Wales Trinity St. Davis during the past years. For example, the Good University Guide 2019, the student satisfaction rate is top ranked amongst uh, almost 200 university in the UK. And also we highly ranked overall uh, um, at the Guardian uh, University Guide. And also I think the best uh, um, matters to your personal life where you study in the UK is about what the, uh, you know, how big the classroom size as an international student, how you would better to integrate with the local student and how many hours that the tutor can give to you as a, as a uh, when you study at uh, the university. So we always highly ranked among all the universities in the UK. So nearly top top 10 around this area, giving a small classroom and more time for the uh, individual learning. 
And, and in addition to that, so you can see a lot of the superb academic uh, uh, experience from our students. We ranked the seventh in the UK for academic experience. And also the Times Higher Education Student Experience Survey 2018, giving us the number eighth of the, you know, the top rate ratings. And we continue uh, uh, to uh, working hard to giving the student the best experience that we, uh, we can. So the University of Wales is a rising star and please watch this space and we are working really hard as a whole team to bring up lift the university rankings in the next five to 10 years. So you will be proud of graduates from the UWTSD where you finish your degree. So next, uh, next part, I will hand over to Gareth to uh, describe, you know, to introduce the, 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 the location, campuses, and the courses offering on our campus. Thank you very much, Esther. Well, as uh, has been mentioned, we are a multi-campus university here at the University of Wales, Trinity St. David. Our largest campus is in Swansea. Uh, so that's where predominantly the, the mass of students are. And we have multi campuses across the city centre as well. So you can see one of the uh, photographs there with the three students walking down the stairs. That's our Alex building for our art and design uh, part of the university. That's actually attached to a uh, late Victorian building. So there's a mix of the old and the new there. That's the old Swansea Library. And if there are any fans of uh, Doctor Who, they will you will see there have been scenes of Doctor Who actually shot at Swansea Library. So it's quite a famous or even more famous landmark uh, than it was before. So our Swansea campus, largely city centre based, we have a very recently built campus uh, which we call our SA1 campus, which is attached to the postcode uh, right on the uh, the waterfront in Swansea. It's the UK's only peninsula university. So we're surrounded by water on all three sides with fantastic views of Swansea Bay as well. And to mention a little bit about that, we are well known for our beaches and bays across South Wales, but Swansea in particular, every year where you'll see the, the good guide to beaches and the, uh, the, the tourism board speaking about the best beaches in the world, Swansea is often included in those. So if you do like to sightsee and take in a natural environment, Swansea is a fantastic place for that. Uh, the Gower being uh, the UK's first area of outstanding natural beauty, uh, along with uh, the best view in the UK, often voted as Three Cliffs Bay, one of my personal favourites, that along with Worms Head. I would suggest anyone visiting Wales for reasons of study or just for, for visiting in general should certainly make their way to see out those fantastic sites there as well. But obviously there's an important part of location as well when we talk about your social life and your, your engagement with uh, your student community as well and Swansea in particular is very well known for that and that is actually sort of UK wide uh, there's, we have a street in Swansea called Wine Street where all of the bars restaurants nightclubs are situated so it's very compact we're a small city of around about a quarter of a million people so it's it's not something that's overwhelming so but it's very warm and engaging and friendly uh, and there are some fantastic places for people to enjoy uh, as well as uh, my namesake Gareth mentioned earlier as well, we're also a very well connected city. So our university campus for the business school in particular is a short stone throw away from the train station, the main train station running from Swansea through to London. So you can, if you wanted to explore the country a little bit as well, be in Bristol in a little over an hour on the train or in just under three hours, you could be at uh, Paddington Station in London and exploring a much bigger, more cosmopolitan city as well. So really well connected. Uh, we have the, the capital city of our small part of the country in Cardiff, just about 45 minutes up the road as well, which also a great place to explore and enjoy the country too. We also have our, our Lampeter and Carmarthen campuses. Now, these are much more uh, rural campuses. So Carmarthen is a town of around about 15,000 people, so an order of magnitude smaller than you would find in Swansea, but a very traditional campus environment feel. So you'll see that photograph in the top right hand corner there with some quite ancient buildings a beautiful chapel attached to that as well uh, and some really lovely country grounds so if you are looking for a quieter university experience as often is the case with postgraduate students in particular if you've done the nightclub 
clubs and partying as part of your undergrad and you're looking for a slightly more tranquil and bucolic environment in which to study, uh, I could certainly recommend Carmarthen for that campus community sort of feel rather than having it more spread across the city as we have in our situation in Cardiff, uh, sorry, in uh, in Swansea rather. We also have our Lampeter campus. And as Esther mentioned at the beginning of the talk as well, Lampeter is the ancient part of our university, the third oldest Royal Charter in England and Wales, uh, something we're very proud of. We have this really interesting position of simultaneously being the country's oldest and youngest university due to our Royal Charter that stretches back now 200 years, but as well as the recent mergers that have may have been made from Camarth in Lampeter and Swansea and have formed the University of Wales Trinity of St David. So we're in such a lucky position to be able to look back at a long history and a, a pr prodigious history at that, but also be at the cutting edge and being a, a very innovative and forward-looking and ambitious institution uh, as well. Lampeter is more rural than Carmarthen, further, further rural and uh, more sparsely populated. So we're looking at just a few thousand people, but it very much has a feel of a uh, ancient red brick university. It's a fantastic environment. If you are looking for a, a peaceful and community based university, I could highly recommend Lampeter uh, as well. As we've got mentioned here, we also do have our campuses in Cardiff and London as well. These aren't as, as sizable as our campuses in um, well, London in particular in uh, in South Wales, but absolutely part of the University of Wales Trinity St David family as it are uh, facilities in Cardiff as well. So lots of opportunities to explore the country here too. As I say, Swansea is a very welcoming city and uh, you can see some, some lovely photographs there that, that Esther's put up. So you can see in the top right hand corner is our city centre campus. That's where I spend most of my time. Um, and I think something really special about the university as well Esther mentioned how we our rankings and the best part of the university really is premised on that support and care that we provide to our students. And I think that open door policy and approach that we applied the, at the business school, but also uh, more widely at the university as well, is central to our DNA. And you may well speak to lots of other universities to making your decisions as to where to actually carry out your studies. And most places will say that they will support and help you. But I can promise you that the way that we are set up is very unique. We have relatively small class sizes. You certainly wouldn't be in a room of 300 people as you would be in some other universities. And you'll get to know your lecturers on a very personal basis. You'll form relationships and connections with your lecturer. You'll be able to knock on the door of their office as you would if you come to visit me on the Swansea Business Campus there. And I have the, the best coffee in the university. So always feel free to come and visit me for a coffee and a chat but it's a big part of what we're about and we understand that uh, a lot of students want to need that support and it's the conversations and the reading of drafts and all of those additional functions that we provide as academics uh, are really the adding, adding value elements of that uh, as well. You can see there that the sweep of Swansea Bay in the, on the left hand side, uh, it's one of the longest continuous bays in the world, in fact, uh, with a very high rise and fall, the second highest and, right, highest rise and fall of the tide. So that's a, actually a fantastic photograph of that there. That tide comes right the way up to the seawall, but actually recedes a long way up, way past that pier as well. It's quite uh, spectacular to see, particularly in the spring tides uh, as well. And I actually grew up in this very area just out, outside of that photograph. So again, a huge advocate for the beauty of the city but also the friendliness of the people and it's such a wonderful place to study as well and I say personally I studied with in the city I know what it's like to be uh, a student within within Swansea as well it's a very welcoming and, and, and friendly place uh, and to say if it's also great for outdoor activities we have a lot of people who uh, come down to, to Swansea and uh, to, to study but pick up hobbies as you can see down in that bottom right hand corner there such as uh, as surfing so we have fantastic facilities for that and we're also a growing and ambitious city so I obviously I'm a major advocate for the university I will sound slightly like I'm working for the tourist board for, for Swansea City and Council as well here but largely because it is an expanding city we've seen so much growth over this last 18 months Months, despite there being the, the pandemic and all of the challenges that COVID brings, we've seen the city transform itself in terms of the scope of the building that's going on. 
So there's a large uh, sort of 4,000 seater new stadium uh, being built that's largely driven towards the music and, and, and arts. There's fantastic sport in the city as well. So uh, particularly for South Walians, uh, it's, it's the oval shaped ball, it's the rugby ball, it's the obsession of a lot. But we've had Premier League football here in the last decade and hopefully a return to that as well. So fantastic if you're interested in sport as well. And, it, and and the art scene in Swansea, there are some really fantastic things for people to engage with as well. We have a long industrial history. Uh, we were actually known as Copperopolis. We were the, the centre of some major industries over the last couple of hundred years. But we're making this transition now into a, a knowledge-based economy as well. So you can see the, the aerial shot there in that top right-hand corner. That's our, our new campus, as I say, our, our Peninsula campus. That's the initial artist rendition of that. And you can see that the all of those blue buildings there are part of our campus and the plans for the next uh, decade or so so in terms of its development, a really beautiful environment, but again, a stone throw walk into the city. So you can be in the middle of the city centre in just a, a brief five minute walk near all amenities that you could possibly hope uh, to be close to. So it's a very compact city. You get to be near the beach, you get to be near the countryside, you get to be near the town, all within this very close area as well. And you can see in that bottom right hand corner, uh, there was the Swansea Tidal Lagoon. So this is uh, actually, again, at the moment, a, an artist rendition of a future plan for Swansea. Uh, but we're looking to look to the future of sustainable energy as well. So again, a very ambitious city. Uh, we're looking to use that enormous rise and fall of the tide to, uh, to power uh, the large chunks of the city as well. So I think just to demonstrate that we are, we're part of the older than new, we're part of that, uh, particularly that uh, Victorian industrial revolution, uh, but also now at the cutting edge of things as well. And I think that's very much represented in the mindset of the university, this long and prestigious history, but also now looking to the future to be a modern and cutting edge university uh, as well. If you can move, oh, thank you very much, Esther. Uh, so I were very, very much about the uh, the connections that people make, and we're a very friendly institution. Again, partly because of the size of the institution, and partly because of the mode of how we we operate and work. We're very much a teaching led uh, institution. So you'll hear this a lot from our, our academics. You really have two types of university, those that are teaching led and those uh, that are research led. We have some world leading research across the university and people have done some tremendous things and, and world changing things as well. But the heart of what we do is that teaching. We understand that the vast majority of students now coming to university are looking to do so to enhance their life opportunities and life chances to get better employment, perhaps to become academics themselves or to go into a particular profession. And that having that teaching led element built into the DNA of the university is absolutely crucial to us uh, and ends up with far stronger student outcomes for us uh, as well. So you can see the, the lovely photographs here of, of Lampeter. As you can see, this is our very traditional part of the university where the, the Royal Charter in 1822 came from. So we're very, very proud of that uh, and say speaks to that great and illustrious history that we've had. If you were looking for so that, that peaceful and quiet studious environment, particularly for postgraduate study, if that's what you're looking for, uh, Lampeter, I can very much recommend that. Most of our humanities programs actually operate out of Lampeter. So if you're interested in programs such as archaeology, theology, history, language and literature, uh, Lampeter would be the, the place of study for you. So these campuses are also uh, sort of discipline driven as much as they have their own distinct characteristics as campuses too. So why study in Wales? Uh, it, I'm again going to be a huge advocate for this because yeah. It's my home country uh, and very passionate about that. We're a small nation of just 3 million people and say a quarter of a million of those people living in Swansea and about uh, another 500 or so thousand living in Cardiff. The rest sort of dotted around uh, the country as well. I think as a small nation, we're, we're permitted to be quite proud and passionate of, uh, of where we are. And, and it is genuinely a lovely place to live. It's a very safe place uh, to be very affordable in terms of cost of living in Wales, particularly compared to some of the other big cities uh, across the country. So 
particularly when you're looking at um, student accommodation, you'll find that to be much more affordable in Swansea than you might in cities like Bristol or even Cardiff and, and particularly big, big cities like uh, Birmingham, Manchester, London, for example, you'll find those to be much more expensive. And then the general cost of living is also more reasonable than you might find in some of these big cities as well. So you mentioned nightlife, you'll find it perhaps cheaper to go out for a drink in Swansea than you uh, would to go for a drink in uh, in Bristol, I should say, drink responsibly, everyone, even though you're students as well, and uh, make sure you still enjoy the experience too. Uh, but it's, it's a very much a lifestyle sort of place. And we've seen this, particularly in South Wales across the pandemic, it's become such a desirable location to live as people have found now that they don't necessarily have to live in big cities in order to, to gain uh, worthwhile employment. A lot of people are working remotely now. And Wales as a as a destination country has become incredibly popular because of this fantastic environment, because of its safety, a wonderful place for children and adults uh, right the way across the board, but also the sporting environment, the natural environment. Uh, and, and the space that it affords, it says it's, it's, there aren't any uh, heavily, heavily built up city areas that you might find in other parts of the country. It's just a genuinely lovely place to, to live, work and, and to study. And uh, I do hope as well that many people who do join us to study stay with us for the long haul as well. Uh, we have a, a favourite son in, uh, in Swansea, Dylan Thomas, a well-known poet. And he often spoke about Swansea being the graveyard of ambition. And that's always been a slightly controversial phrase in Swansea as to what Dylan Thomas meant by the graveyard of ambition. But I've always taken that to be that it's a place that people come and they had intentions of going elsewhere, but were so enamored by the city, by its people, that they failed to move on to go to other places. And they, they may have had plans to travel the globe, but Swansea was such an enticing place that they ended up staying there. And I, and I like to think that that's what uh, our city's bard, our most famous son, was actually meaning when he said it was the, the graveyard of ambition. Uh, so you can see there the space to reflect, the reading room. This is on our uh, the old Swansea Library campus, as I mentioned at the, the beginning of this. This is where scenes within Doctor Who would have shot. So this, some of this might actually be familiar to some people on the call. So an old Victorian building, but again, a mix with the, the modern and the traditional as well. A fantastic place to study. We have brilliant facilities right the way across the city. Uh, so we have this library facility here, as well as a fantastic and more modern uh, library library facility at our SA1 campus uh, as well. We're certainly trying to encourage people to engage with, well, with obviously with academic literature, but in all forms and manners as well, in a way that is akin to the modern workplace that we are finding ourselves in. So there are shared spaces. So we have space, quiet space to reflect, as you might expect here in the reading room. But we also have collaborative spaces where we're expecting them to be more boisterous and loud environments for the sharing of ideas, because we want you to be at that cutting edge. The world is a, a changing place. We don't simply want to be uh, having libraries that are where everyone's telling you to hush all of the time. We do want this to be something engaging and collaborative. So you can see our, uh, our much more new spaces here as well. Again, representing a, a university that is keen to uphold the traditions as well as move forward and be innovative and forward thinking as well. So just to talk you a little bit through the, the schools and institutes uh, here, I won't go through all of these uh, in specific detail because there's a, there's a lot to cover, uh, but there are, we're a very multidisciplined university and so part of that is uh, across the variety of campuses we have, one within the city itself of Swansea, but then more broadly with, it, with our Lampeter, uh, London, Carmarthen and Cardiff campuses as well also have quite specific uh, functions. So you can see in the top left hand corner there with the uh, Academy of Sinology and also then a, quite a, a, a good link there between the Confucius Institute as well. We have a great deal of international students join us. We're a very cosmopolitan university in that sense. I have a particular interest because my, my PhD was actually related to, uh, well, not quite to Sinology, but to do uh, with the relationships between uh, the East and West and, uh, and the UK and China in particular. So that's a particular area of interest uh, for me I and mean, we have a Confucius Institute on site in the Swansea Business Campus though I will say I've not seen anyone since the pandemic as of yet there but I'm hoping that returns in the same uh, in the same vein we have our Institute, Institute of Education and Humanities so education, as uh, Esther would have mentioned earlier as well was a foundational part particularly of our Carmarthen campus we train a lot of people 
uh, to become teachers, teachers across a wide gamut of uh, of age levels as well, from primary, secondary, right through to higher education. Again, myself a, a recipient of that excellent, excellent training. As you can see in the top right hand corner, there is the Institute of Management and Health, of which I'm one of the academic directors. So very passionate about this particular corner of the institute, corner of the university. Uh, we're a, a large and growing uh, institute uh, in the Institute of Management and Health, and again, very multidisciplined in that sense as well. So I can tell you more about that in terms of your, your options for study. We run everything from very entry-level qualifications. Uh, so if, obviously this is more postgraduate focused, but if anyone in, is interested or have friends and family that might be possibly interested in this as well, we run everything from certificates in education, so uh, entry-level, level four qualifications through to traditional undergraduate qualifications as well. Our flagship qualification for postgrad is really, well, there's two flagships, I would say, which is quite unusual, but we have our Masters in Business Administration, our MBA, uh, and that's a, a general management qualification. It's those three letters that often act as the passport to your success in the future. And again, that was the one that I was a particular recipient of. So I undertook my MBA with the university back in 2005 or completed that back in 2005. And then suddenly the, the world completely changed for me. I had access to jobs that I never would have before. I had interviews that I certainly wouldn't have had before. So absolutely transformational for me. And for those people considering further study down the line as well, our other major postgraduate program within the Institute of Management and Health is our DBA program. So that's our Doctorate of Business Administration. So for people who complete their, their MBA with us, and uh, get a reasonable grade within that of over 60%. There's an opportunity, if you should wish to take that, to undertake doctoral study. DBAs in particular are becoming far more popular uh, qualifications as the world is becoming far more competitive as well. I think that's a major reason for that. Our, our DBA is an excellent program. We've worked really closely with industry. We've worked really closely with academia as well to find out what the skill sets that people are looking for for those level eight qualifications uh, in particular. So we're very much at the category edge in terms of the program design and delivery uh, as well. As the name suggests, we are an institute of management and health. We run a variety of other programs uh, across the institute, and some of those involve public service. Uh, we have a law and business undergrad program as well, and we have a variety of health-based programs, and that's become a far greater interest to people over this last 18 months in particular, uh, as we find the pandemic has driven people to take a, a greater interest in, in health. We also have sports programs. Uh, that we run out of the institute and this is actually moving more to our command in campus now as well and again an, an uptick in interest in sport right the way across the country because we've seen a bounce back effect really after the pandemic and people being more concerned and interested about how to maintain their health and uh, certainly governments are more interested now about how we increase participation and we get people moving and looking after the nutrition uh, as well. We've also got our uh, Wales Institute for Science and Art. Uh, so more of our perhaps technical programs that are happening there. We have some very specific and exciting programs such as uh, automotive design and, uh, and particularly to do with sports and motor racing as well. And we've got our Wales Academy for Professional and Perfect. Sorry, let me put my teeth back in on that one. Wales Academy for Professional Practice and Applied Research. So this is very much about work-based and accrediting some of your previous work-based uh, experience for uh, degrees and for higher degrees and, and master's programs uh, as well. And just in that uh, bottom left-hand corner, I'll mention the, the College of Art very quickly, uh, just because it uh, genuinely does some world-leading research uh, as well. So if there is anyone is, who is of an artistic bent and would like to know more about that, I can certainly get more information for you guys on that. Not my particular area of expertise, as I, I would have mentioned, but I do know that we do some genuinely uh, world-leading stuff on this. My apologies, because I know that one, being from Swansea and being from South Wales, I would have talked very, very fast throughout much of this. So I'm glad it's being recorded so you guys can possibly play this back and listen to me slightly slower. Uh, but I'm also conscious as well. I had a huge amount of information to get across to you guys. And there is st there's still a huge amount more, I should say, because I say deeply, deeply passionate about the university, about the city and, and studying in Wales and the opportunities that that will 
bring for all of the people on this call and hopefully the people that watch this video uh, at a later point as well. So I'm very happy for my details to be shared if anyone wants to pick up this conversation further at a later point. I know there'll be a, a Q&A, but as I mentioned, because we are that small and intimate type of institution i'm able to keep in touch with you guys so if anyone does have any questions that perhaps they don't want to share uh, or think about maybe a week later we'll make sure that my email address is made available to you and you can, guys can contact me as well so from my side of things i'll hand back over to esther now but thank you very much for the time and i i hope that's been useful and interesting for everyone Thank you so much, uh, Gareth, and uh, that's a very passionate uh, presentation. And I've seen some students already raise uh, questions about uh, where is the funding? Do you offer any funding for study in your university? I think this is a very, very important message that I'm passing through to you today, uh, is that the university is very generous to offering a good uh, percentage of the scholarship to uh, support support a student from overseas to study at postgraduate taught or postgraduate research degrees. These you can see from the diagram that, you know, we uh, uh, asking the international student tuition fee is 15,000 pounds per year. So normally postgraduate taught programs are uh, 12 months, which is uh, one year. But also, in the same time, we encourage you to apply our bursaries, which is up to £5,000. So £5,000, that means you can actually budget a whole year of your academic accommodation, as well as the travel expenses from the overseas. So this is a a very significant scholarship that we offer to the international student. And also, in addition to that, we also encourage a student to do research at our school. As Gareth mentioned, it, we offer, which is very unique programs, DBA program, very popular at the moment. And we received a thousand applications per year for this particular programs. And it is also very selective as well. So we require students to have that research ability at a very high level. So in, in as a to respond to students, then the university offering £5,000 scholarship to the research level student as well. As you can see, the, normally the research uh, programs uh, last uh, three to four years. If you do one year full-time in the UK or two years in the res uh, you know, research field, which is you can go back to your country, or you can remain in UK to do the research, then three years is uh, the best uh, kind of a shortest period that you could uh, um, complete this uh, uh, DBA program. It's up to six years, uh, depends on your research and your uh, communication and engaging with the uh, academics. So these are the very good options that university could offer to international students. Okay, I've seen uh, there's a uh, questions. Okay, so okay, so um, probably Gareth from uh, uh, postgraduate insight could uh, liaise with you about uh, you know uh, answering the questions. And how to apply is very simple. You can contact us or contact postgraduates, uh, postgrad.com, or you can go to our website to find the application uh, form that you know you can apply through the website. Okay. Okay. And so for the entry requirement, uh, we are quite a uh, generic. Uh, 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 you know, uh, like most universities in the UK, we require um, if you apply to postgraduate uh, degrees, you must have a good degree uh, uh, from your undergraduate studies. So probably first honor or two one to apply to us. 
if you from Indian and uh, African countries, your English can be accessed by your local, uh, um, you know, um, uh, official high school or GCSE or A level equivalent qualifications. If you don't meet our English requirement, we still need you to provide an IELTS, which is a uh, universal uh, academic English assessment IELTS uh, 6.0. And for the doctoral college, uh, doctoral degree, you can contact us to ask, uh, you know, whether or not you are equivalent, uh, equipped to, to apply this course. Okay. Yes, excellent. Uh, thank you very much, both of you, uh, Esther and Gareth. Uh, uh, Esther was very, Gareth, very passionate, but then again, you're from that part of the world and, um, you know, it, it's great to hear. Um, there are a few questions that have come through, notably, um, I've seen one come through about the campuses, but that, I've got a couple of questions first. First of all, to you, Gareth, um, you, uh, earlier in the presentation, it was mentioned, I think, in Esther, while Esther was talking, that you're voted in many different guides as the top five, top 10 UK university in terms of student satisfaction. Why do you think that is? Um, obviously you've come through the, the town, you've come through the university and you're now still living there. What do you really put that down to? I think it, it's very much, it's a very deliberate decision we've made at the university about how we want to approach teaching and learning. And it's very different uh, to perhaps my undergrad experience, which was done at a different university. And you were very much part of a very large machine there. Uh, so you've been a, a lecture theatre with, say, 300, 350 people. And it was a very old-fashioned chalk-and-talk approach to lecturing. And I know for a fact, having a lot of friends are working in other institutions, that this is actually still quite a common form of teaching just because of the, the large-scale efficiencies of, of working that way. So you'd have a lecture down the front, speaking with to people over a microphone and uh, and often with their back to people whilst they read slides but that's not at all how we would approach uh, our uh, uh, form of teaching and learning so lecture theaters at their absolute largest would be around about 75 people there or thereabouts and that's by design and not, and not by accident we tend to split yeah. those groups down into smaller and more manageable groups because we're teaching led we can go through a slightly repetitious process of having smaller groups rather than trying to deliver this to everyone all at the same time and then breaking down people into smaller groups yet again for tutorials and it's that initial I won't say spoon feeling or, or hand holding because it's it's not really about that it's about guiding people through those early parts of the process particularly people that might be returning to education after after a while or coming into higher education not really knowing what to expect of that and we provide that guidance and foundational support of that early element so that you do become independent students towards the latter part of your journey so it's about that uh, those intimate relationships, those friendships that you form with people, it's its all very informal. And I don't think anyone's ever called me Dr. Gareth Hughes on, on campus. That's, that's <laughs> And people do pop by for a coffee and chew the fat over things. Yeah. We've uh, we factor that into making those relationships with students to know that they're going to be supported, to know that they're going to have that help uh, on hand. And that makes all the difference. And that makes all the difference to people's outcomes as well. So I think we're taking people on quite a long journey and they ultimately get really good classifications for their degrees, for their masters and, and beyond because of those connections that they're forming with academics, because they know that support is available. Uh, you know, I tell students that, you know, we'll, we'll have a conversation where they'll be cordial and, and friendly, but people need to get a thick skin and broad shoulders because I'll cover your drafts in red pen, but that's meant in a, in a loving and helpful way, really. And, and I think that's a big part of it. And again, I, I know lots of other institutions because of the volume of students, they never have the time to be able to look at individual yeah. and support people through. Uh, and, and that's really what we're all about. And we know that's ultimately making a difference to the, to the student in their performance as well. Of course, and, and obviously a big reason why a student would be happy, you know, you know, top 10, top five student satisfaction doesn't just happen overnight. No. Um, you know, you were very passionate about the, the city, the region, the country. Um, talk to me about affordability, um, accommodation, things like that, because obviously compared to some of the major cities in, uh, in the UK and even in Wales, the likes of Cardiff, I understand it's a lot more affordable. Is that correct? And yeah, absolutely. About accommodation. absolutely. Yeah, far, far more affordable than you'd find it uh, in other parts of the country. 
we're seeing a lot of uh, student specific accommodation privately built student specific accommodation being built across the city at an incredible rate over this last uh, 18 months in particular so we have now being currently built just, just outside that silver building you would see in the photograph of during the presentation uh, student accommodation built right on site more or less for 285 students there are another couple of high rises that have been for 300 plus students built on the, the high street as well. Well, again, very close to the campus, all within walking distances of all of our Swansea city centre campuses. And you'd be looking at, and let's say that's probably the more expensive end of student accommodation in, in the city is the, the private specifically built um, student accommodation would be starting off around about £115 a week, which is again, far cheaper than you would find it in a lot of the big cities. But what we find a lot of students are doing is taking up multiple occupancy homes, particularly in their second and third year, and particularly postgraduate students uh, as well. And those costs are, are far, far lower. So we'd be looking then something that are certainly sub £100 uh, for a week for excellent accommodation, I should say as well. The, the standing and standard of student living accommodation, I know, has increased remarkably since I was a student. And uh, not that anyone on this call will get this reference, but it was a lot like the young ones when I was uh, when I was younger, uh, where it was a slightly grotty condition. But that is long gone now and you get really high quality accommodation uh, and all of it again we're quite a condensed city anyway so everything is nearby for you uh, and the general cost of living is, is very affordable as well certainly compared to a lot of the, the surrounding big cities yeah whether at the m4 yeah yeah and that was gonna be my next point as well you know those students looking to come to the likes of cardiff london edinburgh their capital cities their major cities they cost a lot to live in naturally yes. they will just because of the cosmopolitan nature of them and also obviously the standing that they have so i think that's a really important um point there to live in a, in a major city in the uk um uh, things are always happening the nightlife's great um you know social activities taking place you mentioned earlier about the the football those rugby clubs in swansea in south wales as well so um look so somebody's asked a question about um the campuses can they choose what campus obviously you mentioned your your two or three different campuses some yes. are more quiet than others um, how yeah. does that work so uh, the courses will be attached to a campus but there is choice within certain bounds as well so if we took our swansea and Carmarthen campuses for instance if you wanted to do an mba you could do an mba in swansea you could do an mba in Carmarthen. so that's a choice that you have available to you some of the focus tends to be slightly different and it's worth having those in-depth conversations with perhaps some of our program managers so if i took the business in Swansea, I would say they are traditional university business programs and they would share many, or if not all of the same characteristics as you'd find with the vast majority of business programs across the country, barring that we do try and make them more employability focused than perhaps some of our counterpoints, because we think that's a really important element uh, for students going into the workplace. But looking at our Carmarthen programs, uh, particularly those business undergrad programs, their business focus, as you'd imagine, but there's also a sense of the rurality that, to that as well. And sustainability is a, is a major contributing theme. So obviously there will be elements of sustainability on all business programs now as we move into a, a more sustainably minded world, but we've certainly got that rural focus to sustainability uh, in our uh, the campuses that are further west uh, as well. So yes, there is choice. There will be a crossover with certain programs, but as well, there'll be very specific uh, programs that are placed in a particular location because they suit so particularly say humanities like theology and history will be in our, our lab the campuses excellent uh, and there's one more question as well that you know i'm just keen on time making sure we don't go over here um one more question but there's one point i'd like to make before that any students watching this whether it be now or in the future just remember that the regulations and guidelines in Wales are very much different to those in England. So if you are looking to come to the UK, please ensure for COVID-19 and the pandemic purposes, even though we are getting back to some kind of normality now, the rules are still different. So you do need to go onto the Welsh government um, website, double check all the guidelines. Now, just leading on from that then, um, this is open to both of you really. Um, what are you doing differently to other universities to help students from red list countries and students maybe that can't come over as, as accessibly as other students make how do you make them feel welcome how do you um, you know help them move in and, and most importantly how do you make them feel like they're not alone because obviously they're gonna they're gonna be isolating for some point 
Yes, yeah. Do you mind if I take that, Esther? Is that okay? Yeah. Super. So uh, we have a, a word in Welsh, and it's probably one of those words that transfers better than all others, and that's kutch. And that's to mean a, a particularly warm type of hug, basically. And I think we're very good at kutching our international students and, and looking after people in that very, very careful way. Because you know the challenges that people are going through, not only during this pandemic, but also the fact as well, you could be coming from several thousand miles away from different cultures, different languages. So we want to make sure that we're doing all that we possibly can to help and support. So we've got a very good international team that, again, unusually will actually turn up at the airport, meet you there. There'll be a named person beforehand, a lovely chap called Griff. And Griff will turn up and he'll make sure that you've got everything you absolutely need. Uh, and we'll be part of that transport then back from t- generally it tends to be London airports that come and pick you up from uh, and make sure you arrive safely particularly in reference to the the red zone countries and and some of the restrictions that uh, we still find ourselves under. And just to reiterate a little bit more about what Gareth said there, there there are some slightly complex guidelines at the moment. They've had friends that are trying to try to travel into Wales, but have had to fly into London airports uh, and doing that is just uh, the general public. They found that quite tricky. So we take all the headache out of that for people as well. So we make sure all of those plans are taken care of for you. There's very often quarantine requirements for students as well. So you've had a number of students who have joined us this academic year, particularly from India, in fact, uh, and they've needed to quarantine for a couple of weeks uh, before they can join the, the rest of the student cohort on campus. We've provided them with accommodation at our Kamarthin site because we've recently refurbished uh, a lot of the on-campus student accommodation there to a really nice standard, to be fair, as well. But that's all packaged together to make sure you can quarantine in an appropriate way. So there'll be provisions for you in terms of Wi-Fi, there'll be provisions for you uh, in terms of food, and that's all done in a very COVID-safe and very careful manner as well. Uh, on top of that, you can still attend your classes because you've set our teaching up in such a way now where there's a hybrid option for students. So if I'm teaching a class, you'll be able to watch a broadcast of that class from your quarantine. So you're not behind the rest of the student group and it still gives you a chance to start building a connection with your academics and possibly feel part of that classroom environment for when you do integrate into that uh, on campus uh, as well. And again, generally it's about accessibility. We've got named people for uh, for the students to speak to and generally just very nice approachable people which makes it much easier it's not a big faceless department as I said you'll, you'll, you'll meet with Griff Griff is a lovely lovely chap and uh, he'll be there to help and support through all of that process as well brilliant um, it is unusual like you said you know it's it's not it's not normal uh, behavior that a, a university would go to an airport and do that so I think that is fantastic um, and, and I've not heard certainly obviously of all the universities we speak to anyone else that's doing that so that is kind of an exclusive um, opportunity for any international students but but for, look, for now thank you Gareth and, and Esther as well uh, Dr Gareth I know no one calls you that um, I thought I'd get that one out now um, it's been fabulous it's a great insight and um, this will be hosted on demand as well so hopefully many people will be watching this in the future um, we have got festivals coming up next year so hopefully we see Esther and Gareth in future festivals um and so on from there but for now if you two want to turn your camera off thank you very much and we'll see you soon we're the number one website in the world in terms of postgraduate learning over 10 million students have used our platform to go on and apply for a course over 200 courses with high caliber partnerships such as the Chevening and the marshall um which as you will know are high caliber international scholarship providers best accommodation and things like accommodation there were a few things that weren't mentioned today but just because of time really um, visas, um, English language testing, um, support, mental health support, um, much, much more. Obviously, scholarships and funding were spoken about. Head over to their website or our website for more information. And information on our 500 round bursary. Any student from anywhere in the globe can go on and apply for one of these bursaries. They're worth 500 pounds and it does not um, conflict with any other funding or scholarships that you may have applied for. So please head over to postgrad.com. Anyone is appropriate to apply for this. So please head over as soon as possible. A little bit about our festivals for next year, what we've got coming up, because this is uh, the last festival of 21. It's been a long and difficult year for everyone with the pandemic, but we're hoping that next year will bring better and brighter things. Um, we've got the Spring Festival in March, which is a UK festival, very much like this week, aimed towards international students and why you should come to the UK to study your PG studies. 
Summer, we have a clearing and a what to do festival. Um, this is for students that are quite unsure as to what to do next in their masters. Um, we'll have experts from all different universities. Autumn, we'll see our scholarships and funding festival, which again will be popular with the likes of Chevening and Marshall and, and many universities around the UK and around the globe. And winter, the final one of next year, we'll see us do a study in Europe festival with all different countries and cultures being included on that session. But for now, thank you very much. If any questions have not been answered, we will get round to you. And if there's any issues, any concerns, please do let me know. But for now, thank you very much. A huge thank you to University of Wales, Trinity, to St. St. David, Esther and Gareth particularly. Um, we'll be in touch with you moving forward. If you have any questions, please do let us know. But for now, on behalf of all our UK festival sponsors this week, a huge thank you and we will see you next time. Take care.